All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we need to go over this warm up. Um, I imagine we need to introduce the unit, we need to have a dance party. There are a lot of things to do today, so, um, so let's get started. Um, so, do you know how to find extreme value in your calculator? And hopefully, you know how to use your features in your calculator to zoom in out, in and out on the function. How to find using you know the left, right, find the maximum, find the minimum. I just kind of assume that you are well versed in how to use those features, but um, they'll, they'll come up over time. Um, so the first one doesn't have any extreme values, yes. Uh, the second one has a local min and a local max um, at whatever they are, negative and positive. Something. 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 Point. Point fifty-eight. Something like that. Okay, whatever. Um, so you're going to have to use the max and min feature on your second calculate menu and all that. Um, this is an interesting question here, part B. Did you zoom in? And by zoom in, I mean like around the origin, zoom in really far, like make your window plus and minus 0.1 in both x and y or something. 0.1, like really far. If you zoom in really, really far, what do you see? So you, know. you see a line on which, and, and yeah, so for the first one, I mean, now, if you haven't graphed both at the same time, what might you see? Yeah, you might see like kind of an X almost. So what? Um, which one is which? What does this one look like? The first one. Which which line is that? Maybe we can describe it more precisely. It's y equals huh? y equals x, and this one looks like y equals negative x, right? When you zoom in, um, and then when you zoom out really really far, uh, they both basically look the same. Don't even the little little boop in the middle is like just a bottle. I mean, as you zoom out, that's like a feature that just disappears, doesn't it? And they really have the same look really far out, don't they? So I think that goes to show maybe, um, you know, what the role of the monomials inside this polynomial might have to do with their behavior. Um, when different pieces control the behavior, obviously when we're really close to zero, this, this number, this number, this second thing dominates, right? Think of plugging in a number like 0.2. If you cube a number like 0.2, it's basically nothing. It makes it really negligible. But so the, the 0.2 is like a super important thing when you're close to the origin, right? But later, x doesn't look so big, does it? In comparison to x cubed. So I like I like looking at that. It's cool. And now I'm ready for the magic trick portion of today's lesson. Okay. You ready for a magic trick? Yeah. Hi. Um, so what I'd like everyone to do is what it says up there, and that's to come up with a polynomial, maybe put it in Y1, if you will, on your calculator. Any polynomial you like, of any degree, with integer coefficients between 0 and 9. Make sure you obey all the rules and understand why these, for instance, are disobeying the rules. Right? Why is, why is this one not okay? Well, that's not even a polynomial, right? 6.5, can't have that as power. Uh, 2.8, not an integer. Negative 2, not a number between 0 and 9. 12. Not a number between zero and nine. So come up with your polynomial of any 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 polynomial you like. Uh, put it in y one, and then we'll talk in a second. I need like a I need like a magic. Oh, I have it. Okay, perfect. Oh my god! Can you do any principle like that? Juggle the one. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Is that it? <laughs> 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 yeah, anyone have one? I mean, if you're still working on yours, it's okay. We can start with Chris's. Okay. So don't tell me what it is. Don't tell me what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. Goes. The only thing I need from you is one, one point on the curve, and I'm going to ask you, your, your polynomial's name is like f. I'd like to ask you, what is f of 10? Okay? And when you tell me this, let's just be clear, when you tell me this value of your function, I'm going to, I'm going to, just from one evaluation of your function, I'm going to be able to name your polynomial. And if that happens successfully, then, um, then you will all be astounded, all right? Yeah. Okay. You will all, uh, you will all give me money and fame and 
Yes, how much? Wait. All right, Chris, are you ready? So if you have Y1, just um, maybe like type in on the home screen Y1 of 10 or, or however you want to get it. But somehow give me the value of the function at 10. Or just type it in all on your home screen. I'm listening. Uh, 6,499,100. All right, um, was your polynomial uh, 6x to the 6th plus 4x to the 5th plus 9x to the 4th plus 9x to the 3rd plus x. Sorry, 6x to the same. <laughs> Yeah, six x to the six. You said six million. Yeah, it's six x to the six. Six, six x to the six. Four plus four x to the fifth plus nine. Did you say six out six million four hundred ninety nine thousand one hundred? When you evaluated it at six million four hundred ninety nine thousand. Okay, then you disobeyed one of the rules up here, and you need to search your heart about it. Okay. <laughs> is, is all your coefficients are between? Six x to the six plus five x. Minus? minus? Did you just minus say minus? Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Just say minus. All right. Did you obey the rules for real? For real? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's a ten is four thousand six hundred thirty-five. Wait, wait. I, wait. Let me think about which value. I'm going to ask you for a value of the function, and I want to be the one in charge. Okay. Right. okay. Um, I would like you to evaluate your function at uh, ten. <laughs> Go ahead. 4,635. 4,535. Okay. Was your polynomial 4x to the third plus 6x to the second plus 3x plus 5? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week. All right. Oh, you have one more? You want to do one? Okay. She's excited. Oh, okay. Okay, Piper. Uh, let me uh, ask you for a one, just one value of your function. How about uh, f of 10? <laughs> 200,106. Uh, 2x to the fifth plus x to the second plus 6. Thank you, thank you. Uh, like I said, I'll be here all week. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, next, week, next week I'll be uh, at the Bellagio, so um, I mean, I'm touring on right now. This is huge. Uh, so. I'm big in the magic world, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Not a very small community. Okay, so everyone picked up a blue sheet on the way in. Um, I, I see what you did there. Uh, so we are starting to meet it today. Uh, eventually, you may you may even be able to perform at that level as well. Um, where you can do that kind of magic trick. No, you don't. No, no. You have no idea. It's magic. Okay. So sometimes you just have to leave it there. You're like, I don't understand, and I never will. You know. Like, that's, that's what I do with magicians. My brother ruins everything. So uh, I have a story to tell. Um, I uh, I stay here late usually to work, and um, you're like, I'm usually here till about five. And, and by that time, most teachers and students are, are gone, and, uh, and 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 sometimes they get thirsty. A man gets thirsty sometimes. He's like grading papers. And stuff, okay? So I went down and I checked out this. I checked out the vending machine, and I I'm well, actually I was looking for a Mountain Dew, but um. Oh my God. Huh? I all right, all right. Um, and, and I try, I try, I push, I swear, I push the button, but this is what came out. <laughs> and I was like, is this a cruel trick? It's never happened before. It's never happened since then. And I was like, this is incredible. It's like, so maybe some kind of trick the vendor is playing on me. Maybe they like know me and like could be me. I was just astounded. So what I did is, because I was like, this is one of the units we do in Peacock. So I took a picture of it on a, like a really clean white piece of paper, <laughs> extremely even light. And I added, um, I added a, a, like a URL at the bottom to make it, you think that like, okay. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, let's talk about polynomials a little bit. Um, 
Today is, we do have some fun things to do today. We do also, like, I think I mentioned this a few minutes ago, we do have a dance party too. too so. Okay, so that, that's nice. All right, let's talk about end behavior of polynomials. As, as, we, as we mentioned end behavior, ladies, gentlemen, uh, even right away, maybe you're uncomfortable with me calling a polynomial by this name right here, right? So I have a, to, a sub n, x to the n plus, but how else do you write it? This is the best way, I promise. a sub n minus one, x to the n minus one plus dot dot dot, using the triple dot notation. We're all the way down to a zero, the constant term, on the, the coefficient of x to the zero, right? That's the coefficient on the x to the zero term. And the reason we use subscripts is, is not just because we're not trying to like confuse people or like intentionally look smart with technical notation, though maybe we are. Um, it's also like, again, kind of out of laziness. Like if I were to be like, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. First of all, I might run out of letters. And second of all, it would be really hard for me to understand what you mean by like E. Which one is that? What are you talking about? Whereas if, I, if you talk to me about like A3, I know exactly that you're talking about the coefficient on the X to the third term, right? So um, we kind of like just saying, let's call them all A with subtrace, right? That's, that's our motivation there. And then we can say something about the end behavior in first uh, in the unit one style here, let's talk about the end behavior. That is, answer the two questions: limit as x goes to infinity and limit as x goes to negative infinity for for a polynomial. And, it, and we can like kind of close the case on polynomials, but do one foul swoop here. So let's do it. Let's remind ourselves. I think it's review what each of these conditions are. They're completely determined, like it says up in this first sentence, by the degree n and the leading coefficient a n. So. Uh, I'll take a volunteer on the first one, and then I'll pick on any, anyone whom I like on the others. So on the first one, what conditions are, are produce a picture like this? And don't, don't pay attention to the squiggle in the middle. Remember by n behavior, we mean what y values do we get as x goes toward infinity? I don't really care what happens when x is 1 or something. Um, so what conditions produce this first graph if you're a polynomial? Talk to me about, again, the degree and the leading coefficient. I think this should be review. It should be a big topic of algebra 2. Print. Yeah, n is odd. The degree is odd. And an is, the leading coefficient is positive. Right, so I'll write it this way maybe, nice and compact in this box. What she said, right? If an is positive, and if n is odd, that is if the leading coefficient is positive, and the degree n is odd, then you have this picture, or said in limit notation, there you go. And then um, just fill in the blanks on these other ones. And I've got to find people here. Oren. What about the second one? Yeah, no one else heard that, but we'll go with it. Okay. What you said. Well, that's what he said. Okay, promise. Jasper, what about the third one? Talking about the leading coefficient and the degree. Is it? It doesn't necessarily have to be the fourth though. It could be anything even. Um, and the leading coefficient is positive. Good. Okay. And then um, Rebecca, what about the last one? Negative, the lead coefficient is negative, and the degree is even. You got it. Okay, so again, the, I think you know this already. The only thing that might be new here is like the intense, dense notation that we're using, and this limit notation, which might be still a little bit new to you. But we've used, I think this is like the third time we've talked about it now or something. You're so getting comfortable with it, hopefully. Okay, any other comments to make there? I'll go on this slide in a second, and um, I think even if you didn't like write down everything, every little, I think you'll be able to fill it in the blanks, won't you? I mean, you, you just demonstrated that you understand these things. Because we have to, um, we have to dance. <laughs> Some of you have done this before. Well, then we saw a video of a stick figure doing it. So oh, no, no, no. You, 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 you have to do it. I'm not sure I understand this whole, like, watch someone else do it. That's not good. Stupid domain.
seem like they'll be into this. Okay. All right, here we go. So let's um, let's let's talk about what it means to dance uh, the function dance. It might be that might be you, or maybe that's you, or maybe maybe it's you. That's you right there. Or could that could it be you? Maybe that's or that guy. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, everyone, everyone, stand up. I'll, I'll teach you how to do this. Okay. Um, Starters, if you're if you're uncomfortable doing it like reverse to the class, then I'll do it with you this way. You can face this way because they need to match us. Okay. All right. So when I say one, um, I mean degree one. Right. So just for the sake of the song and the rhythm here, we'll have to like okay. I'll just say one. That'll mean degree one. And you'll do both. First positive leading coefficient and then negative. So degree one by that we mean um, uh, a linear function. Right. So. So you go like this. Ladies, you have to be part of leaders too. You can turn around if it helps too, right? You hear what I'm saying? So you can like get it right too. But it's also it's a mind bender. Ba, ba, okay? So I'll say one and you'll go ba, ba, and then I'll say two and you'll go ba, ba, right? And then I'll say three and you'll go like this with your arms. I'll do it with my arms too. Three. This is how you Like that. Wait, And then four. I got it, I got it. Right? And then five. And then six. And now what's happening as we go higher, too, also? Yeah, we also kind of get a little narrower and higher. Reach for the skies. Eight. Nine. Ten. How are they doing, by the way? Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. So you feel it? You feel it? You feel it? Wait for it. Wait for it. All right, here we go. You ready? Uh, I'll just like I said, we'll do one, two, like that. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, a little skinnier, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that good enough? Yeah. How'd you guys? I, I didn't know. 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 All right, that was your uh, that was your gym credit your gym credit for the day. Okay. Oh man, there was a casual save. Okay, do these problems. I like to throw stuff, weird, weird stuff at you, sorry. My apologies. Work together with your new friends to make these happen, okay? At least get some good thoughts on the first two. 
first one because it's a little tricky right I, I like to do this to you guys sorry so you want to tell us how you thought about it or you guys did you come to a conclusion or, on the first one yes no do you want to take the second one instead wait I'm trying to hear Lauren sorry guys Yeah, so I was trying to trick you up, but you, you saw through you saw through it here. So it goes like this, yeah, yeah. And the answer is negative infinity. On the left side, we head toward negative infinity. If we had asked about the right side, the answer would be the same. Yeah, so great. Um, you saw through my, yeah, obviously by leading coefficient, you know, we mean the leading coefficient, not necessarily the first thing that happens, but if it was in order from highest degree to lowest degree, then it would be the first. Um, uh, Laura. Where do I keep Laura now? Yeah, okay, sorry. We're, we're all rearranged here. Can you can you guys handle that first one? Did you come to something uh, or not? Yeah. Okay, that was, uh, I saw that it, the degree was 15. I was pretty clear on that. But can you tell us a little bit about how you determined that the, the leading culture was positive? Because that wasn't immediately obvious. To me. Wait, listen, guys. Say it again, sir. Okay. And that's all you have to worry about is, I mean, if this was to the 16th here, would that be the same reasoning? Would it be? Would the leading coefficient be? Still, I'm trying to think what this actually says here. I know you don't want to multiply this out. I don't either. Um, imagine. Imagine. Um, but if you were to multiply it out, do you agree that you would get all the different powers possible between x to the 0 and x to the 15 in a big polynomial? You actually would get all those powers here. Uh, and you're welcome to try that if you like, but yeah, on your own time. All I need to know, though, is not any of that. Only, only the leading coefficient, right? So, how do you get that? What's that going to be? Um, give me some reasoning around that. Uh, yeah, uh, Chris. Um, so, like, the leading coefficient is going to be like the highest exponent, and the highest exponent in this case is going to be fifteen. Um, right. And like, well, because like it has negative x in the parentheses, it's going to be negative x to the fifteen times negative fifteen. Yeah, it's going to be like negative 15 times negative x to the 15. Yeah, yeah. and because um, they're both negative, it ends up being a positive. Right, so the leading coefficient will be 
of pause numbers. This is why I was pressing you a little bit, Laura. Uh, like, obviously, if this was to the 16th, the leading coefficient would not be positive. It would be negative, actually, because, because of this, right? I'm just saying, the, how do you generate the x to the 15th term? Don't you multiply negative x by negative x by negative x? Right? So I don't know what the rest of it is. It's a huge, nasty polynomial. But all I need to know about is that first term. So that's a little bit tricky. Once we establish that, then I think we can answer the question. Um, so what is, what is, I'll come back to you, Laura. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of h of x? Good, yeah. So, I mean, lots of analysis on the front of that problem, but then once you have it, you're like, I think I know what to do. Okay. Uh, and we answered that one. All right, now I'd like a volunteer. I'm not going to pick on anyone on this one here. So talk to me about uh, at least some reasoning around why that makes sense and why is this even in the section I've just been talking about? Like why, what, what, how does this relate? Daniel's excited about this. Okay, so x to the third is odd, so it's kind of that. So okay. it'd be like that, and it crosses the x axis, so it has to be that. Good. Can anyone make that more precise? I like where you're going with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because it's, a, uh, because it's odd and continuous, it has to pass through every point from and by it, what do you mean? Like, it's hard for me to understand, because right now what I have in my possession is an equation. So I don't, for, for me to understand what you mean by an equation passing through, I, I want to make sure I understand what that means. Like, can you be more precise? Like, what, I think you're talking about a polynomial, right? But I don't have a polynomial. Like, I have an equation, don't I? I mean, we could make, we could, I mean, I'm splitting hairs, maybe, you might think. But what, what, what is the polynomial in question here? I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, what is, do you want to name it? What would you have? What would you call it? Um, x cubed plus 2x squared plus, or minus 11x minus 12. Sure, and we would like to know, we desire solutions to when this function equals. Yeah, yeah so uh, do you guys agree that? Um, if this solution, if this polynomial takes on the value zero, that happens if and only if this original equation has a solution. Yeah. Right. So th now we have. Th now I think I have a polynomial in mind. And then do you want to say more? Uh, sure. I mean, so you can see since the highest um, exponent the highest power is odd, the end values are going to go in opposite directions. And since you have a continuous function, the intermediate value theorem means that it's going to take on every value between negative infinity and positive infinity, which includes zero. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a couple ways of, do we even have the intermediate value theorem? Actually, you wouldn't even have to talk about end behavior. If you could just find one value of this function that outputs that the y value is negative, and one value of this function when the y value is positive, then since it's continuous, that would guarantee that it takes on the value zero sometime in between those two values, right? So that would be the intermediate value theorem we could use. Um, yeah, we just talked about end behavior. If you're convinced, like, um, uh, Daniel and whoever else said, Chris, I forget who else, um, said that the end behavior is negative infinity and positive infinity on the left and right, then I think that convinces you too. Or uh, you don't talk about the range. The range of any odd degree polynomial will be negative to positive infinity. So but that will include zero. Yeah, however you want to say it. I don't know. There are a couple of give good explanations you could give. Um, Speaking of zeros, we just talked about this on the last slide. For a function by zeros, we mean uh, the solutions to that equation we were just looking at, where f of x, the polynomial in this case, equals zero. Those are called the zeros of f. Um, it's also true sometimes that we use other words, too. Maybe you've heard us use, I think you're, you, you should be exposed, I think, by now to all these different words. And in general, we use those interchangeably, x-intercepts, zeros, roots. You might think, though, you might actually kind of search your heart on this. What is the, is there any difference? Because I think there might be some nuance to difference about how we use those terms. So, you know, think about that on you, if you like. Uh, and then when you're ready, you know, just show me that you remember how to find the zeros of a function. I don't know, of a polynomial. This will be a, this is actually, by the way, hopefully it's clear that I actually go out of my way. Like, it's very difficult, actually, for me. I have to go out of my way to come up with functions that are easy to a answer this question. Most questions of this form, most questions of this form would be would be intractable, right? If you just like wrote down a cubic. 
So I'll call on someone in a second. You can take a second to answer so. Answers here from um, uh, Crystal. Go ahead. Wait, listen, guys. Can you can you say it like in a pirate voice too? No, I cannot. Okay, go ahead. What'd you get? Sorry, that was a distraction. My bad. Okay, hey, Crystal, go ahead. Are you hearing this? Yeah, zero, okay, has X in it, so, yeah, what did you yeah, say? Yeah, so, like, each, yeah, so each term has the, um, has X, so, like, when you put zero in, it's going to automatically be zero for the Y value. Absolutely, by inspection, it should be pretty clear that zero works, yeah. Yeah, and so the other one, there's only two. Okay. The other, the other one is, um, five, because, um, when you factor out the X, then it's, like, X times parentheses X plus five, close parentheses squared. Yeah, x minus five, sorry. Okay, uh, I have to process what you just said. Yeah, so this is, so if you factor out an x, you get x squared minus 10x plus 25. And I think I agree with that, because if you multiply the x back out, you do have what we started with. And you can, you, you're saying, if I multiply the x minus five squared out, I do get this. So I think, I think I'm with you. Okay, that's another helpful way to write this, because it makes obvious what the solutions are for that equation. Certainly now I can tell. It wasn't so obvious before, but I can definitely tell if I plug 0 in or 5 in, this thing is 0. So, okay, I like that. So, yeah, we're seeking solutions to that equation. And I think she found two of them, and, and I think those are all there are, yeah. Just a reminder that, I mean, that was like on your summer packet, too. Just a reminder that you should be able to do that, I hope, right? Find the zeros of a polynomial. We will obviously need to think harder about fourth degree or fifth degree or, or even or even cubics like the one we just did that aren't so nice, right? It's not always true that a nice factorization will be available to us. So that will be a sub the subject of at least two or three of our days is just like how do we handle really messy ones? Um, I assume already that you need you know how to find the y-intercept. So just demonstrate that you can do that for this polynomial. How, what is the y-intercept? If it's in standard form, what is it? How do you find if it's in standard form? What what's the lead, the the you put? Well, you always just plug in zero, which is what you'll do here. If it's in standard form, then it's just the constant term, right? Which is nice. But here, this is not in standard form, so I agree, as Cheyenne said. Plug in zero. Tell me what you get. What do you get? Anybody? Negative 12, apparently, is the y-intercept. OK. Let's talk about another thing I'm done talking about the y-intercept. OK, let's talk about multiplicity of zeros. Uh, if you took a county level two course, this is definitely something you talk about. I don't know if Ms. Gex talks about it yet, but whatever. Um, this idea of multiplicity of zeros. We say that a, 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 a zero has multiplicity m whatever that might be, if it appears that many times in the factorization. So up here, for example, the, the negative 2 is a 0 of this function up here. And I would say it has multiplicity 2. Or sometimes you might have used the language. You might have said it's a double root or something, or a triple root. So if you've said that before in your life, that's you talking about multiplicity. The multiplicity is 2. The multiplicity of, is 3 of that 0. Um, or the multiplicity of 3 and negative 1 are each 1. They only appear once in the factorization. Yeah, right. Um, I remember double root is like when it touches 
Yeah, and that's... Like that, but how do you get a triple root? Yeah, so what does that look like? And in, in general, the rule is, and again, I would hope that maybe this was explored in your Algebra 2 class context, but I, I don't know. Right now we're kind of in like gunshot, uh, shotgun approach here, right? Uh, get it all out here. Um, just reviewing things that we might remember. But you might kind of play around with it. It's actually for, it's not too hard to explain maybe. But if it's odd, like a triple root, or like a single appearance, the multiple city is one, then it crosses the x-axis of those places. And then, um, and then if it's even, what happens, I mean, you kind of already explained a little bit, not just for a double root, but for also for a quadruple root. I don't yeah, know. How does it have a you have this kind of action, right? It hits the x-axis, and then you just touch it, and it goes off. Yeah, right? It doesn't cross there. If you have a triple root, how do you have it hit the... So it crosses the x-axis at that place. But just... Yeah, so for example, y equals x cubed. x equals zero is the only zero of that polynomial. And it's a triple root, do you agree? So there it crosses. The y value goes from being negative to being positive. Whereas at an even degree root, like if you looked at the graph of x to the fourth, you know, as we go from x values less than zero to x values greater than zero, y values go from being positive to remaining positive. <coughs> so that's what we mean, right? So that actually gives us a lot of, like right away we actually might already start being able to build a picture of this without too much help. We already know a lot about this kind of function. Um, x minus 2 squared x plus 1. x minus 2 squared x plus 1, for example, is the example on the next slide. I just want to leave that text up here for now. Um, so can we get a quick graph of that? I think we could, couldn't we? I mean, definitely the zeros are 2 and negative 1. What's the y-intercept of this new guy? <coughs> yeah, 4. And what's the end behavior? It's cubic. The, the leading coefficient will be positive. And then multiplicity says that, too, what happens? Yeah, it's a double root, so it like bounces off the x-axis. Actually, the, the language your book uses is um, it kisses the x-axis. I don't know why. I like touches. So you can get a pretty quick picture. All right, I think you're well prepared to do homework. Uh, number one, which I will not check until Friday, okay? You have a test tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Good dancing today. Well done.